Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Suratul Hajj. We are in the Hajj season this year. We wanted to seek some guidance from Suratul Hajj. Whenever you want to seek guidance from the Quran, the Quran will never fail you. The situation that the Ummah is passing these days is a very peculiar situation where we are witnessing the atrocity and the tyranny of a, a country called Israel and the oppression they are doing against our Muslim brothers, sisters, children, young, old in uh, Gaza. And we are passing these blessed days of Hajj. This is on another hand. And we are discussing in this series the collapse of societies. This is a third thing. So I think Surah Hajj is an amazing surah where we are bringing all these topics together and we are seeing some amazing linkage between uh, various things in this surah. This is what I wanted to discuss. What does Surah Hajj tell us about this situation? And this is the power of the Quran. If you see Surah Al-Hajj in the first part, for sure, there is the description of the Hajj. And, and the Hajj is such a journey that purifies the soul and the mind and the heart of the believer and connects him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's activity of the heart as well as activity of the body as well as activity from the money. So it's kind of like an immersive program where a Muslim goes into this kind of boot camp, immersive boot camp program where a person goes into the Hajj and purifies himself and comes out a powerful human being, empowered with his spiritual connectedness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he is on a mission to change because he's no more the same person who was there before Hajj. Now he is a person who is actively going to participate in checking against the dhulm. See this linkage here, and it is very evident for, for me when I just read Surah Al-Hajj. وَإِذْ بَوَّانَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتُ وَأَذْرٍ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ Verse 27, for example. ثُمَّ لِيَخْضُوا تَفَثَهُمْ وَلِيُوفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ وَلِيَطَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَقَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ The various rituals of Hajj, and then the Qurbani and the, and the sacrifice. وَالْبُدْنَ جَعَلْنَهَا لَكُمْ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ okay. uh, this, this person is doing this only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ Taqwa that resides in the heart. When you are finished this, go to verse 38. Now Hajj is finished. Now what are the next ayat? And that's made me ask the question is, what is the linkage? Just let, let us read together verse 38. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدَافِعُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ خَوَّانٍ كَفُورٍ Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defends those who believe. So see, those who believe, this is the community of Muslims. These are people who are empowered after the Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to grant them victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like whoever is deceitful, ungrateful. And in our context, we wanted to understand this in terms of the state that is called Israel. At the time of Sahaba when these verses was revealed, uh, probably at the very early stage of Medina period, uh, this was understood to be the, the emerging power. They just migrated to Medina. A minority, a small power, comparing with the superpowers or the big powers surrounding them. And see the next verse 39, <laughs> Allah is giving permission to fight back, okay, those who have been fought. So this is a fighting back, defending the land, defending the cause for those who are secure in their land, but some aggressive power, some settler colonial power came and occupied their land. I think it's not difficult to understand these verses in the context of the Israel-Palestine situation here. That's why when uh, Abu Bakr 
And Abu Bakr means he is the, the, the Sahabi, the number one Mufassir of the Qur'an after the Prophet Sallallahu He is the one who understood the Qur'an more than anybody else. So while he read these verses, there was no jihad at that time. This is the first, one of the first verses that is now talking about this struggle, about a conflict, about a minority who is just got the power of a small state or a small city, Medina. So when this verse was revealed, Abu Bakr who said, فَعَرَفْتُ أَنَّهُ سَيَكُونُ قِتَالٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that permission is granted for those who are being fought for they have been wronged. There is a tyrant, there is a colonial settler power who are oppressing them. So Allah is truly most capable of helping, helping this community. Allah is capable. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ Nasr, the word Nasr means there is a struggle. Because when you say victory, the victory the word victory and the word Nasr, it comes in a situation or in a setup where there are two forces, maybe they are imbalanced in power, but there are two forces who are fighting each other. And then only in that context we have, we have Nasr here. Thus, even Abu Bakr who understood that there is going to be Qital. So still we, we haven't reached Badr and those situations. And then, if we wanted, wanted to understand the meaning, let's go to next verse, verse number 40. They are those who have been expelled from their homes for no reason other than proclaiming our Lord is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. How true it is in the situation of this, these were communities, villages, Muslims, they were, they were there since hundreds of years, thousands of years, they were, this is their indigenous land, they were enjoying their orchards, their olive gardens, they are peacefully staying in this land, all in a sudden they found themselves out of their villages when Israel started to occupy and proclaim this, this, its state in 1948. And most of the people in Gaza they have been expelled from the, their lands in, in other cities, from Tel Aviv, from all those Israeli cities. And this settler community, they dragged them. So many of those people in Gaza already, they are refugees since 48 or after that. So, so this verse 40 clearly describes this community, that they have been expelled and they have been under dhulm and oppression. Here Allah describes the mechanism, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a situation grants them victory. This happens through a struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says Nasrihim la qadir means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of granting the community of Muslims who are on the right path. Allah is able to grant them victory without going into a fight, a struggle, without bloodshed. Because Allah has the control of the earth and heaven. He can bring whatever power and destroy the enemy. But this is not how the rules of Allah works in the societies, in the community. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this through struggle, through a fighting. That's why Ibn Kathir, when he came to explain this verse, he said, He is able to grant victory without going into a fighting. Allah is able to do that. Because this is the whole objective of this world. Allah wants to know who is the munafiq, who is the hypocrite, who is true in his faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is struggling to, to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he went on to quote so many verses. I don't have time, but I'll just give you the names. Surah Muhammad from verse 4 to 6, okay, where Allah says, وَلَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ لَن تَصَرَ مِنْهُمْ وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَ بَعْضَكُمْ بِبَعْضِ If Allah wanted, Allah would have immediately granted victory or destroyed his, his enemies. وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَ بَعْضَكُمْ بِبَعْضِ The whole objective of this world is that Allah tests one community with the other. The concept of ibtila, the concept of testing is manifested 
through this type of setup where there is a power, an oppressor, and then there is community who are believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being subjected to this oppression. This is the yablu ba'dukum ba'd. And in Islam, how this community attaches their heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, remember, we are now describing the quality people and, and hence Surah Al-Hajj. And hence Hajj is a mechanism where this thing is happening. Let me just give you an example here. Uh, the whole mission of Islam, when it started to, to gain some political power, how did it start? That journey started in Mina, in the setup of a Hajj. Before there was the Hajj under Islam, when there was the, these people from Medina came to Hajj, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was searching, he was going out in Mina trying to ask various tribes to support him. So the Prophet Sallallahu met with the delegates from, from Medina who came for Hajj. So this place was in Mina and there was this secret meeting between the Prophet Sallallahu and the people of Medina. And then they made that agreement, uh, a covenant between the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the people of Medina. And they said that, okay, Prophet Muhammad, welcome to Medina, we're going to support you. That is the starting point. The starting point was Mina. That's why it's amazing when we describe these things, we link up between these things while we are at the time of Hajj. And we are discussing these things from Surah Al-Hajj. And after the Hajj has ended, we are now describing the process through which the Ummah is now emerging out of this thulum, out of this oppression. We are trying to understand it in the context of the situation and the conflict that is happening in Israel and Palestine. And this gives a boosting, a, a hope in the heart of the believers that this is the time, inshallah, is a turning point for the Ummah. And it's now emerging to be to defeat its enemy, which is Israel, and behind it is the the USA and this world and the various Western forces here. So really, it's amazing when you try to read these verses in that setup and compare what happened to the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba with what is happening now, and that is the value of the Quran. The Quran always has in it this kind of hidayah and the guidance for the next generations. I was telling you some of the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing that he is able to defeat his enemies and grant victory to the Muslim communities without the need for them to shed blood. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, to know who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sacrifices, have the sabr and patience. Another verses is 14 and 15 of Surah At-Tawbah, where Allah says, Qatiluhum, fight against them, and then goes on to describe what are the objectives of this. Through this, through this fighting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieves the pressure and the anger in the, in the heart of the believers. So in fi when you see the, the resistance forces uh, reciting verses from the Qur'an and then launching those Yasin 105 or these missiles in the tanks, isn't this bringing some kind of, it, it brings a relief to the heart of the believers. So through this fighting and this qital, all these objectives are, are meant by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Surah, uh, Surah At-Tawbah 14 and 15. I'm not going to detail of these verses, but I'm just leaving these verses for you to, to study. Also, Surah At-Tawbah, continue reading 14, 15, and 16. I'm hasibdu man tutraku. Have you thought that you will just enter Jannah or you come to this world and finish your journey in this life without being exposed to this kind of trials and tests. Uh, verse 16 of Surah At-Tawbah. Similarly, verse 142 of Surah Al-Imran. So these are all verses and also verse 31 of Surah Muhammad. So through all these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is giving a hope for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to grant victory to the, to the believers. And if we then 
move to the next verses, the, the description of the Muslim community. Verse 41. These are those who, if established in the land, so Allah gave them victory. They established themselves like the Sahaba when they went to Medina. They established Islam on earth. This is the Muslim community, their objective and their goal. They perform prayer, they pay their zakah, they encourage what is good and forbid what is evil. This is the whole objective of creating us and sending us as Khalifa on this earth, that the Muslim community establishes the truth on earth. It eradicates all kind of oppression, injustice, which we are now seeing the Western world is is spreading through its financial system, through its discrimination, through its Eurocentric, through its Western liberal uh, secular systems, through its... Okay, this is what we're seeing. And Allah is saying here is that a Muslim's army's objective is this. Okay. They encourage what is good and forbid what is evil. Walillahi aqibatul umur. See this key word, aqibatul umur. And Allah rests, with Allah rests the outcome of all affairs. In the context of what we are describing in this series, we are talking about aqiba. Wal aqibatul lil muttaqin in other places. So whenever there is this conflict, we are talking about the two camps. One camp is the, is the non-believers and the other camp is the believers. That necessitates conflict, that necessitates number of years they are oppressed. This necessitates, now we are talking about a, a stretched time. But what is end? There is an end. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is for the muttaqin. وَلِلَّهِ عَقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ and, and what ends at the end is for the believers. And that's why this Surah Al-Hajj, Allah is giving a hint to the Muslim community. They just now settle themselves in, in Medina and Allah is, is telling them that in future you are going to have these struggles. But don't worry, a time will come when the whole Arabian Peninsula will be under your control. Those superpowers that are in Mecca or in other places, or don't worry about them. And now here Allah is bringing history. See the verses after 42. So at that time, Allah is narrating to the people of Medina the stories of Nuh and Ad and Thamud. Okay, so after 1400 years, we are narrating these verses. In addition to stories of Nuh, Ad and Thamud, we also know the story of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi what happened after these verses. So you see how powerful this ayat is and how, it, how it's giving hint to us on what's coming in the future for the Muslims. Because those people of Ad and Thamud and Qawm Ibrahim and Qawm Lut and Ashab Madian and the great struggle of Musa with Fir'aun. In all these things, what is happening? What is happening is summarized in verse 44. أَخَذْتُهُمْ See this, these things. أَمْلَيْتُ kafirin That I delayed the fate of the disbelievers. I let them feel the illusion of a victory. Just see what happened to Israel. They rescued four of their prisoners and the captives from uh, the hands of the resistance. But in order for them to do that, they have killed close to 300 Palestines and Muslims. Children, mostly children and women, just indiscriminate brush fire with forces aided by USA, by other forces just destroy and save four, four, four persons. So see this, this atrocity here. I'm late lil kafirin. I just delayed their fed, but thumma akhavtuhum. Until when the appointed time came, I seized them. Akhavtuhum fa kaifa kana nakir. So, and how severe was my response. Then they became history. So see the transition now from this previous verses 44, and now we move to 45. فَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةٍ فَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَىٰ عُرُوشِهَا وَبِئِرٍ مُعَطَّلَةٍ وَقَصْرٍ مَشِيرٍ Now we come to the core of our discussion in this series. The parameters and the causes of the collapse of societies. 
Here Allah says that many are the societies we have destroyed for persisting in wrongdoing. Their character became volume. So a person when he does volume one time, this is something maybe he has done one time, but he is, when he's done hundreds of time, then he earns a title called volume. But he, if a person does volume just once for the first time, will, he will not earn the title as a volume, okay? Just he did volume. But these people, they have already earned the title of volume for the 70 years close to 80 years of dhulm, this state of Israel. Wahiya Walima. And similar thing happens in the past. And this is what verse 45 is telling us. What will happen to them? Wahiya Khawiyatun ala Urushiya. Leaving them in total ruin. Wa bi'irim mu'attala. Many are the abandoned whales, meaning that they had a vibrant community. Whales means, okay, this is a symbol of life, a marketplace, symbol of people meeting up in some downtown, okay, some, okay, some hub, technology hub, this, that, okay. You can, you can understand this bi'rim mu'attala and qasrim mashid and lofty palaces, okay, in our modern term. You can now think of Tel Aviv when you read this thing, what is going to happen to it. It will stay in ruins. This is the type of discussion or the type of analysis the Quran wants us to do. And if you read the next verse, Have they not traveled through the land? And we are talking about travel through the land and travel through the history. Okay, فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا وَآذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارٌ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبٌ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ So their hearts may reason. Allah is asking us when we read this previous, what happened to the previous communities and nations, Allah wants us to analyze it as such in the context of this type of a struggle. And let's not be very much materialistic and secular in our view because we're going to miss lots of root cause analysis. And we'll be blinded by staying shallow on discussing the collapse of societies on non-root cause elements and stay there and, and see how Allah is asking us not to be blind here. Allah is saying, indeed, it is not the eyes that are blind, but it is the hearts in the chests that grow blind. Many of those scholars have their heart blind, but their mind is open. They go into very deep analysis, but they miss the root causes. And in this context of these verses, we already saw what is the root causes. We already saw the fate of wrongdoing and dhulm. And we already saw that the other, other side, they are sticking with the right. And this is the side who are sticking with the wrong. And they struggle between them. And this is the fate of this community, the collapse of this community. They are palaces, lofty palaces peoples of meeting, you just pass in that places and see some of the ruins. I thought that this surah, when we read the context, we read the role of the Hajj, the Hajj producing the quality Muslims. We only, inshallah, these verses give us the hope that in the Hajj, where millions of Muslims are meeting, they are raising their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, save the Muslims in Palestine. These people are sending their applications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the events will unfold in a way that will leave the zalim and the oppressor, inshallah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy them. And this is our hope when we read Surah Al-Hajj in, in this light and asking for this kind of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One might ask the question then is that, okay, when is the victory? So immediately in verse 47, Allah says, وَيَسْتَعْجِلُونَ كَبِ adab." I mean, the sequence of these verses as if it's a kind of interactive, intellectual discussion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing interactively with us. Any question we raise immediately, Quran anticipates this question. We 
think that, okay, when is this victory? You're talking about the victory, victory, and every day there is killing. So Allah is saying, they, they challenge you, say, oh, Prophet, to hasten the torment. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never fail in his promise. And Allah's promise is, is we'll find them in the Quran in various places. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ You just go to Surah An-Nur. Okay? You just go to Surah An-Nur. That is just uh, two surahs after Surah Al-Hajj. And there you'll find the, uh, the answer of this wa'd. When Allah says a promise, you'll find this promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would grant victory. Surah Al-Anbiya also has indication of this wa'ad. So what I'm saying here is that this Quran is such a valuable book. Lots of hints and the ummah or the people who has this book should never resort to despair or hopelessness. No, the Quran gives us full of hope and whatever we are seeing uh, in, the, uh, in the killings and uh, the smart heirs and the, and the children and the women, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah accept them as, 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 as shahada and Allah is testing them. What is our position in, in, in such a situation? So it's my urge that we raise our hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in dua on the day of Arafah, in, during the Hajj, after the Hajj. And inshallah what we will be seeing in the coming days is full of hopefulness. Every day we can see how the state of Israel is fast approaching towards their collapse because they have increased their dhulm and they are, I hope, inshallah, in the last part of Amlaytulaha, as Allah says, is I just gave them some delayed, delayed their, uh, their punishment, but it is very much evident from the history that they are, they cannot escape the rules of Allah in the history and the rules of Allah in the collapse of the societies. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.